Good morning, everybody. It's time for Resilience Live. It's 11 a.m. on Friday, UK time. And this is my weekly show where I talk about all things to do with resilience, well-being, performance and growth in your personal life and your work life. I did miss, miss last week's session. Um, I had to reschedule. And so... I'm doing the same topic this week that I had scheduled for last week. So if you missed that one and you wanted to catch that, this will cover it for you. Uh, apologies, I had to cancel. It's really interesting. I'm just reflecting on that right now in terms of what it did, what it does to me when I break my consistency and my pattern. So I was doing live streams every week and I was consistently doing them and you get a lot of momentum. Um, and then as soon as I, I stopped one, because I had to cancel one, which happens in life, um, I really felt myself go back down. And I started today. I was like, oh, my God, I've forgotten how to do this. I don't know how to do this. I, I, I'm going to be rubbish. And blah, 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 blah. And to be fair, that comes up in my head every time I do it anyway. But, uh, but it's just interesting. The momentum, the consistency. When you're going for something, people talk about it. Like when you're at the gym and they say, okay, if you want to get the results, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep doing it. And the minute you stop the habit that you're now cultivating, it feels like an uphill struggle to get back on. Uh, so it's much easier to just try your best. Obviously, life happens. We have to change and things sometimes have to stop. Um, but where you can, if you've got a new habit that you're cultivating, if you're going for something in your life, you must keep it going as much as possible. Because as soon as you stop, you literally take your energy back to zero and you've got to start building the momentum again. So I guess I kind of felt a little bit of that today, even though I just missed one week of a live stream, which is no big deal. And I've made content and done streams for many years, so I'm sure I'll be able to do it today. Uh, who do we have here? We have Celia. Hello, lovely. I'm doing great. I hope you are well as well. Um, just say hello if you are online. Who are, who are you? Where are you from? Uh, where are you watching from? Um, it'd be really good to know who's out there. Uh, so, so I had a topic today about the two types of stress and the importance of understanding these. Okay, um, I'm a little bit I have a little bit of a bugbear on my tongue, which I feel like I need to get out first um, so that I can then focus on what I'm doing. I don't know if that's right, but I, there's just, I'm just going to say it very, very quickly um, for people on LinkedIn. Uh, there's this whole crazy thing going on on LinkedIn at the moment where someone posted, a CEO posted a picture of himself uh, crying because he had to let go of some of his staff and he was posting about how he felt bad about it and he'd made the decision and it was his fault and so on so on so on um and he got berated slated and i was like what and lots of people were saying how dare you like it's you know my pain is worse than yours if i've been laid off or you're faking it or you're doing it for virality uh you're faking and staging the tears and and i'll be honest my intuition generally is hot when I know truth, when I see it, when I feel it, when I sense it, it's very rarely wrong. And as soon as I saw his post, I saw his photo, I looked at his profile, I sensed authenticity behind who he was because I can spot a faker a mile off as well. There's loads of people you see that when they even you can read the lines and you're like, I can see the manipulation under that. But for him, I didn't get it. But everyone else was like, he's fake, he's fake, he's fake. And you know what? Whether he's fake or not. The point is, they kick a man when he's down. He's crying and they're like, oh, it's fake. It's and yet, how often do we talk about the problem of men's mental health? How often do we talk about the fact that the biggest killer of men between about 30, 45, something like that, is suicide? And we say men should open up. Men should be allowed to be vulnerable. Men should be open. And then when they do it, you slate them, you crush them, you humiliate them, you, ah, uh, it was really hard for me. I was shocked. And the, the shame that a lot of the people who are doing it were the people who then post all about their own mental health all day, every day on YouTube and what on, on LinkedIn. And, and that's a big part of their brand is like, oh, I'm struggling, oh, I'm struggling, oh, I'm struggling. And someone else does it. Oh, I was really shocked. I, honestly, I'm kind of processing it because I'm like, I struggle when I 
see humanity reflected back to me and I'm like oh god what are we doing um but hey look it's all learning anyway I feel like I kind of just need to get it out get it off my chest because it's been going around LinkedIn for a while and lots of people are making posts of it and I was like I don't want to be that sort of jump on the bandwagon but but this is my area this is what I do I'm not jumping on a bandwagon this is what I do and so I have a comment on it I have an opinion on it um and I just found it really sad because it's like even if he's faking even if he's inauthentic how do you know how do you know and that's the thing that gets me people really think they know they're like i know i know he is i know he is you don't know the guy you've never met the guy he's nothing but an avatar on a screen you saw one photo of him how do you know and here's the thing my darling souls when you berate someone online which feels so easy you wouldn't say that stuff to their face i bet but when you do that, how do you know that they are not going to walk away from that screen with so much pain that they end up doing something really bad to themselves, to others? You don't know that. So please, please exercise caution. If you doesn't whatever you think, just be quiet. If you can't be nice, just be quiet. If you think he's off, then fine. Don't give him the platform by commenting and giving. Just leave him because that will fizzle out by itself. But also interesting is how many people are triggered by seeing someone else's emotion and pain. If you can't sit with someone else's emotion and pain, if you can't witness it, if it triggers you, that says something about you, not about them. So there's a lot of learning here. There's a lot of things to reflect on. I found it very hard to witness all of this, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad I did because it hopes it makes people reflect. Also, there were lots of really, really awesome people who did get it and, and say, look, hey, man, like even if he's not being authentic, which I think he is, seriously, is it OK to do that to someone like complete like smear campaign on him? Like from uh, I, I, was, I was like, if I happened to me, you would see me, people. I'd run like, uh, oh, he must be very strong to be dealing with that kind of thing, I have to say. Um, you know, I, I think the reason this gets me so much at the moment is because I recently had an experience where a lot of my emotions came out um, from a lot of things that I've been through over many, many, many years. And other people are so quick, and even in my personal life, who know me, who've seen me, are so quick to dismiss them. And, and be like, we shouldn't think like that. You shouldn't be like that. You should be this way. You should be that way. And that's what they were doing to this guy. You shouldn't post like that. You shouldn't feel like that. You shouldn't blah, 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 blah. Who are you? you? Are you in me? Are you living me? Do you wake up every day living my life? Do you know how I feel? Do you know what I've been through? No, you don't. So the point is, reserve your judgments. Reserve your judgments and allow people to be who they are. Now, my rant is now over and I'll get on to my topic. I got lots of comments here. Um, Salia says, I believe people feel like they can judge someone with one post, which is ridiculous. Yep. They don't know anything. They don't assume, which is very dangerous. This is pure bullying. It is bullying. It was bullying. I was shocked. I honestly see it, like it upset me to see some of the thing. Like, would you say that to someone's face? Imagine you had someone in front of you crying. Would you literally have the nerve to slate them and say horrible, nasty things? Most people wouldn't. And that goes to Kirat. Hello, my darling. Good morning to you. That goes to her comment here. It's a keyboard warrior. And look, I'm sure everyone every now and then has got caught up in something online. And that's the thing, though, is, is um, oh, I think I just lost my connection there. Sorry, guys. Hope it's back. Um, are we online? I think I'm online. Am I online? Sorry, I just had connection failure. I think I'm back now. So just give me a little thumbs up in the comments if you can to let me know that I'm still online. Um, but yeah, it's the, the, the assumption and, um, you know, the, the, the fact that you would say my rule for social media as what I was saying is that, yeah, of course people 
um, we all fall into that. And I think what was happening is a lot of people were jumping on the bandwagon. So they weren't really formulating their own in opinion or really sensing and in intuiting what was going on with this guy, what he was posting, what it was all about, what they thought about it. They were just jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, look, all these comments are saying bad stuff. So I'm just making that come in my head and that becomes my opinion. And then I write the same thing. You can see it. I can see it. It is so clear as day for me. But... Uh, a lot of people are not conscious of that. And so they just jump on it and then it rolls and it builds and it's just like, oh, crazy. Um, Celia says, all emotions are okay. Absolutely. That's a really key lesson. Really key lesson. Um, so, hey, look, I just needed to get that out. And it's lovely, Celia and Kira, to have you here to bounce that off uh, with because I've kind of been unsure about, oh, should I even speak about it? But this is my area of work. This is what I do. So, of course, I should speak about it because I have something to say. Um, but that's it. It's done. Move on. Um, I do want to now get on to the topic of the day, which is um, stress, the two types of stress. So this is a really important thing to talk about. Uh, because there's a lot of noise out there, and rightly so, about we've got to get better uh, at managing stress. We've got to understand stress. We've got to reduce stress because so many people are chronically and acutely, extremely stressed to the point where then they get burnt out, they can't work, whatever it is. People are really struggling. Their day-to-day -day lives are so stressful, whether it's in the workplace uh, whether it's the economy, the COVID, the wars, the politics, the things like this going on on LinkedIn that we just spoke about, the social media, the relationships, the complex world we live in. We call the world VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. That is not an easy state situation to be in, an easy environment to live in because it triggers the part of your brain that's very primitive, that likes certainty, that likes control and predictability. It likes to know that everything is okay and everything is safe and I can predict what's gonna happen and I'm in control and all that stuff. That's what that part of your brain likes and it gets triggered when you get stressed by all the fact that everything's all over the place and you don't have control and it is very uncertain and so many challenges are coming at us that we can't control and so on, so on, so on. So basically, um, we do experience a lot of chronic stress. And we know that chronic stress leads to huge amounts of mental and physical illness. So we know a lot, a lot of mental illnesses and things like we were just talking about, the emotional challenges of it. Um, and, and ultimately, it's really bad for your body because when you go into chronic stress and you go into what we call fight or flight mode, um, it turns off your immune system, it turns off your digestive system, it raises your heart rate, it raises your blood pressure, and, and basically it, it sets your body like this. Your body's like this, like you just do this with me if you're watching. Just tense everything and be like, and then breathe really shallow. Just like go into that state and feel how awful it feels for you. It's That's a very unhealthy way to live. And yes, you may not be... Ugh, but some people live like that. And even if you don't have it really extreme, extreme anger, extreme anxiety, extreme stress, people have that low level hum of anxiety just following them through their day. And they know, they feel a bit, oh, something feels off here. Something feels uncertain in the belly. They're just going through feeling uncertain. They just feel worried all the time. This is all um, chronic stress, chronic anxiety, these sorts of things. We're not meant to live like that, my darling souls. We're really not. That fight, flight, anxiety, anger, all that stuff is supposed to be temporary. It's supposed to be a threat occurs. You go fight, flight, get away from it, fight it, whatever, and then you chill. But that's based on our animalistic primitive nature, which comes from the animal kingdom. So imagine the deer is being chased by the lion and the deer goes into fight or flight, ah, fights it, runs, whatever, hopefully gets away, then chills. We are animals. We have the same part of that in us as well. But the problem is, in the modern complex world, our stress is not triggered by being chased by lions and blah, 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 blah. It's triggered by constant threats, non-physical, complex, modern-day threats. The wars, the COVIDs, the, 
economy, the job stuff, the relationship stuff, the personal health, the finances, the complex world, the social media. And we're constantly bombarded. So we're just triggered, 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 flight, 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 flight. Blah, 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 blah. And then we live like that. And it messes you up. It totally messes you up. Really, really bad. Um, so I'm just going to have a little look at the comments before I talk about uh, why we do need to manage that because of the fact that it's so unhealthy. But I'm then going to distinguish between that and here's the key and good stress. Because my worry here is that we become half wise, which often happens in the world of human development. A lot of people don't actually understand details of what happens inside us, what we do, and how we work and whatever, which is fine because I don't expect everyone to. Like I understand more because that's my job. That's my business. That's what I do. But not, I don't expect every person to, but that's why I'm sharing this. Because often what happens is you can take a concept and think you understand it and then apply it. But because you don't fully understand it, the application of that then actually ends up giving you bad results. So I want to help you to understand it fully. So now you can be more fully wise and navigate your life and manage your stresses better. Um, because basically, yeah, not all stress is bad. And if we start trying to remove all stress, love this. Um, so I'm just going to read Celia's comment here. Stress is mandatory to move on and go forward as far as we can and beyond. So that's a very good segue. So yeah, thank you to exactly what I was going to say um, and talk about is the good stress. So what I just talked to you about distress is, or, or uh, I call it sort of destructive tension. We can, instead of the word stress, we can use the word tension. You feel a tension, right? You feel it in your body, your mind might be raising tension, right? Um, and we have what we call destructive tension. So when I'm in tension and I'm destructive, fight. Fighting is destructive. Flight, run away. In the modern world, in most scenarios, it's destructive. Unless you're actually facing a physical threat where you need to fight or flight, which very rarely happens to most of us in the modern world, uh, in the developed countries. But unless you're facing that, most things you can't fight or flight. But you go into that uh, dysfunctional state. So you, instead of dealing with a problem, a relationship issue, maybe you start a fight and then it goes back and forth. Maybe rather than dealing with the workload on your desk because it stresses you out you flight you run away from it you avoid it you pretend it's not that pretend it's not there doesn't help you so fight or flight actually becomes very destructive it's tension and it's destructive when you allow it to drive your behavior on the other hand we have creative tension also known as you stress and this rather than the fight or flight which actually makes us shrink makes us move regress and go away from the world when we're stressed we go oh we shut down like this they're like this we're living like this that's not cool uh, and so it's destructive to our actual expression and health and well-being and growth but creative tension is when you feel a tension but you move into it you move out into the world. This is growth. This is going out of your comfort zone. This is trying new things. This is expansion. This is creation. This is what you're meant to be doing in life. And a lot of the time, it feels icky. You feel nervous. You're going for that new job. You're about to step on that stage. You're going to have that difficult conversation with your manager. You're going out of your comfort zone in order to grow and progress and do what is needed to be done for that. And it doesn't feel good. You still feel tension. And you may still feel a bit nervous, a little bit anxious, a little bit, oh, and a lot of people, when they feel that, oh, oh, they go back and they hide. No, 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 no. You must be able to move through that. Imagine childbirth. Is there tension there? Is there pain there? Yeah, but it's a profound act of creation. Imagine the, the chick that has to break the shell of the egg. It's a bit of tension there. It's a bit of cracking through something. The seedling that's pushing up through the soil, oh, getting up there, this little tension. We hear the story, if you've ever heard about the lobster. So when lobsters are growing, their shell around them obviously doesn't grow. It's hard. It's just stuck as it is. But the, their little soft body inside is growing. And what happens is that it 
it grows to a certain point where it's now pushing against the shell, which is too small, and that creates discomfort and tension. And so that's what tells it, I've got to move out and go get a bigger shell or grow a bigger shell. I don't know exactly how lobster shells work. Um, but, but the tension is what directs the growth and change. The tension is the signal towards growth and change in a new direction of what is truly wanted, needed to express and to grow. So if we are trying to be, I'm so chill all the time, I never feel tension, I'm so relaxed, and I'm, you will never achieve or grow in any way whatsoever, my sweet souls. You're going against a law of nature by trying to be totally chill, happy all the time, feeling good all the time, positive all the time, blah, blah, blah. No, creation, imagine an exploding star which created the universe there is tension energy seeking what we call resolution expression it's that and then you go out burst and creation comes about the volcano oh it's ready to erupt and then it comes out and do you know how much new life is formed on what comes out of a volcano i saw this really awesome uh Thing, this sort of geography thing on TV, uh, nature program, and it said that volcanoes underwater, you know, under the, on the base of the seabed, you get the little sprout, and the steam and the chemicals that are constantly being released from that into the ocean water are a hotbed for new life. It's that tension coming out and the steam is being released, 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 that is then the fertile ground on which new life forms grow. So we must get used to feeling tension, discomfort, but it's up to you to be able to discern the difference between destructive tension, fight, flight, stress, regression, shut down, defend, blah, 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 versus um creative tension you stress growth i'm scared i'm a little nervous oh i'm a bit, i'm feeling tension i'm changing i'm growing different you know unpredictability unknowns i'm going into it doesn't feel great but you have to distinguish between the two and only you can do that as you navigate your own life and then you'll know if a direction in which you're going is actually triggering you into destructive tension and therefore do you need to do something about that, uh, process it, allow it, understand it, see what's going on in you, um, or it's actually creative tension, which is like, oh, okay, I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing. Um, but what we shouldn't be doing is saying, let's never be stressed. Stress is so bad, we must get rid of all stress. The type of stress that's causing all the physical illnesses, all the absenteeism from work, all the uh, you know long-term sickness from work, which cost the economy billions and billions and billions, by the way. And there was something on the health and safety executive just recently, which said that the I think it's a, over 50% of workplace absence is related to stress. So it's a very big problem, but that's the type of stress that causes the problem. Um, but, but great, we've got to work out what that's all about. We've got to look at how we, you know, alleviate that um, and create with different workplace cultures and experiences and learn to manage it ourselves. But don't make the mistake of thinking then that everyone has to be always happy. If you want everyone to always be happy and chill and relaxed, nothing will, you won't cr create a business, you won't create new products, you won't serve your clients well and come up with new innovative things. You won't grow, you won't achieve anything. So let me do some comments and then uh, I'm just going to check over some other things that I, I make sure I've covered. Um, stress becomes a positive force in all that carries us for us. Exactly, see, so yeah, that's the thing. And I think that, you know, terminology is often quite important. Um, well, it's always important, actually. It's very important. Language is absolutely key. And so, um, but it can be quite confusing. You know, sometimes I've, I've used a few different words. So stress, um, I've, all, I've, I've distinguished into two types. Distress, fight, flight, uh, 
versus you stress, which is, oh, I don't feel great, but I'm growing. And so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. It's like the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, turns into a load of mush, and then it needs to grow wings and start to fly. And it needs to push. It needs to flap its wings. It needs to break its own way out of the cocoon in order to strengthen its wings so that it can fly. It needs to go through the tension through the difficulty in order to be able to fly. So that's good stress, good tension. It's growth, it's creation in motion. It's good. But that's not the same as the human tension that we're experiencing, the fight, flight, blah, 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 which just makes us shrink. So, so yes, yeah, so there's you stress, distress, and then as I've called it, creative tension versus destructive tension. And so we're not trying to get rid of it all because if you do, you're going against life. You're going to stop life happening, creativity, innovation, growth, success, experiences, challenges, your heart, your soul, everything, expansion of you, expansion of your team, your biggest business, everything. It needs tension. When you're at the precipice of growth, there will be tension. And you must keep moving through that, not say, oh, I don't feel good. So I've got to go back. Make me comfortable now. Make me feel happy. Give me padded cushions and bubble wrap and make me feel safe and comfortable. It's dangerous. We will turn into blobs of nothingness if we're not able to handle tension. But again, I'm not saying that you should be able to live every day in a state of fight or flight because things around you are not conducive to your health and happiness and, you know, workplace cultures, blah, 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 families, issues, economy, society, people can't pay their bills. That's a very real problem that's going to stress people out. I'm not saying to you that you should be able to just hang with that because, you know, that can be very real and that needs to be looked at seriously. And we've got to understand that that puts people into a very distressed state and that affects their health, which then affects their work, which then affects the economy, which we then have to pay for their health care. And we all get, this is all affecting all of us, right? The whole thing. So I'm not saying that we should just like brush that sort of stuff off. That needs to be looked at. But, um, but you've got to discern, am I stressed and feeling tension because I'm going for something greater than where I currently am from going for growth, I'm trying something new, I'm going into the unknown, but it's expansion, it's growth, it's possibility, I want to try it, I want to go for it, even though I'm scared, I'm going to keep going. I'm growing in myself, I'm speaking out in a way that I never did before, I'm learning my own courage, I'm becoming more whole, I'm learning more about me, and every time I do that, that requires me to step out of my comfort zone, which doesn't feel great, am I doing that, in which case, please keep going, don't stay comfortable, don't wait for the safety net, there ain't one. Or am I actually just psychologically stressed, worry, worry, fear, anger, going around in my head, body's like reacting, heart rate, and I'm living like that. There's no good. Doesn't get you anywhere. That's the one we want to look at and say, hang on, what's going on here? That's not helping. But never try and get rid of all your stress, because if you do, you will never grow, you'll never progress, and we won't create the wonderful things in the world that we have created creativity comes from tension so we must be able to handle it so that's my piece i think let me just check if um i don't know why my nose is a little bit blocked today um i hope you enjoyed the weather by the way i have to say some of you may know i was in uh mallorca for seven weeks uh not long ago so i was in very hot weather hotter than this and it was intense, but I had the ocean right there. So I was like, oh, this is fine because I've got a little bit of an ocean breeze and the cool ocean. But here I'm back in England and I'm like, I'm loving it. Like, believe me, I would take this over cold weather any day. But it's pretty hard to do things like English sun and heat is very like, oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty tough. But I ain't complaining. I love it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you're taking away, by the way. Did, did anything I say make sense? Like, did it resonate? Do you understand the difference that I'm talking about between creative tension, destructive tension, good stress, bad stress, you stress, distress, whatever you want to call it? Um, and, yeah, does it give you anything to think about in terms of, okay, well, how would you navigate your life then? Because, um, you know, I'll be honest, there's a lot of stuff. I'll tell you a little story, which I just thought, really? My nephews uh, are Canadian, 
and they're telling me they're a little oh by the way one of them dressed me today again if you saw my post on linkedin um <laughs> he's got a thing about choosing my outfits and my jewelry and he did say make sure you tell everyone on your live stream it's so cute um so yes this is courtesy of my little cushy pie um so but basically what they're saying um is that there are things like one one child may slip on the snow or one child may um i don't know not, not be tall enough to go on a climbing frame or might fall and basically what they do then is they shut the whole thing down and don't let any kids use it i'm like how is that gonna help that's that that's silly that's silly because you're trying to protect children from pain and tension you're going to stop them actually growing into their full potential mentally and physically emotionally everything and look i get it i get quite protective i don't want kids to feel pain probably because i went through so much of it but at the same time i have to understand that for them to grow and be healthy and resilient there's that word it's everything i teach they must go through tension and if one child gets upset about something and then no other child is allowed to say it, do experience it, one child hurts themselves, that's bad. Obviously, you might want to look at your safety measures. Absolutely. But then you say, no child can do this now. You've just taken away a lot. So this is why we got to be clear on what, how, what, what life is. Life exists through tension. Life grows through tension. Creation happens through tension. If you cannot handle tension, the good kind, the challenge, the stress of, oh, I'm growing. If you can't handle that, where, where are we going as a species? What's going to happen to us? We're going to be very weak. We're going to be very weak. And when life knocks us, which it always will, we won't be able to handle it because we haven't gained resilience. Because the way we gain resilience is by falling and getting back up. It's by being uncomfortable. It's by trying new things. Imagine if a baby, when learning to walk, fell down, banged his head, and you never let him try again. Imagine what you do to that kid's life. They would spend their lives not walking because you didn't want them to get hurt again. And then you say to all the other kids, oh, my kid fell and banged his head when he was walking, so it's unsafe, so all kids, babies, don't learn to walk. Toddlers, no walk, don't toddle. Don't toddle. Stay on the ground. It's unsafe. Imagine. That's all we're doing to ourselves, by the way. Mentally physically, emotionally, that's what's happening in a lot of areas of modern society. And I would suggest we really exercise caution. We really exercise caution because we may not see it now and we may not understand it now. And I'll tell you something, 95% of people won't understand what I'm talking about. But you give it another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, if we keep going like this, it's not gonna be pretty. And I'll be dead. And then maybe people would be quoting me and say, oh, yeah, Pinky said. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it happens, right? People speak truth and wisdom. And unfortunately, sometimes we're early. And it's only later that we look back. Oh, that person who's dead now. They said that. They did say this might happen. So let's heed that. If you don't agree, if you don't get it, fine, lean it. But if this resonates with you, it might be worth thinking about what we do for ourselves and others and our children in our life now. We really need to take a sip of this water. I've been waiting to do it for a few minutes. Um, Kiret says, wonderful as always. Sorry, got to go to a meeting. No worries, my lovely. I'm going to wrap up now, but thank you so much for being here. Um, so Lisa says, we won't change if we don't step out of our comfort zone and experience good stress that will help us make things better exactly we must be willing to be uncomfortable but again you must discern for yourself what type of stress am i in the growth kind or the defense kind if it's the defense kind it's not going to take you anywhere if it's the growth kind keep going through it you must that's how you grow strong and resilient that's how you create that's how you make things better for yourself and others but um, this whole thing of never be stressed, never be stressed, never be stressed. Again, don't be half wise. All stress is bad. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not all tension is bad. Some is essential. So, 
I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to thank you for watching. And thank you for your comments as always, my sweet, sweet souls. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you like this, whenever you're watching it, if, let me know your comments. What do you think? What are you getting from it? Give it a thumbs up. Give it a share. Send it to anyone who you think you might be interested in it. Um, that really helps to get it out there if you think it's an important message. That's great. And on that note, I'm going to go. So thank you so much. Have a lovely weekend. Enjoy the sunny, sunny times in England if this is where you are. And I will speak to you again next week. Thank you, Saliha. Take care. Bye-bye.